Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett and welcome to another episode of UFOs and the Paranormal. Today I have something different for you. I'm going to talk about cryptozoology. The name of today's episode is called California Lake Monsters and Sea Serpents. California has a number of lakes in which unexplained creatures have been sighted and also all along the California coast there have been reports of gigantic sea serpents. So that's what I want to talk about today. And the first case I'd like to talk about is actually Lizzie of Lake Elizabeth. Lake Elizabeth is located about 17 miles west of Palmdale on Elizabeth Lake Road. Uh, this is a rather small lake. It's not very deep, uh, but has many reports of an unexplained creature. First reports stretch back to about 1780 when Spanish explorer Junipero Serra named the lake La Laguna de Diablo because Native Americans uh, in this area said that a dragon-like creature lived in the lake. Among the first actual eyewitnesses to report unusual activity was a rancher by the name of Don Pedro Carrillo who reportedly abandoned his ranch in 1830 after a mysterious fire burned down his property. And he felt like the lake was actually cursed by the devil. In 1855, American settlers moved into the area, but they also reportedly abandoned it, saying that it was haunted. So the first recorded sightings occurred around that time. Uh, rancher Don Chico Lopez and two others observed, quote, a huge monster with bat-like wings emerge from the lake. Uh, Don Lopez had been actually losing his livestock regularly, and now it seemed he knew why. Uh, so he actually sold his ranch at a loss, and the property was purchased by another rancher by the name of Miguel Leones, who also claimed to see the creature. And in 1886, yet another rancher, Don Felipe Rivera, also reported seeing this gigantic reptilian creature. So again, this lake is not very deep, and in fact, it has dried up completely during a number of droughts. Some researchers believe that these reports may actually pertain to Lake Hughes, which is the larger lake very close by, about five miles away. But that's when the reports uh, seem to end. There are a few scattered but unsubstantiated modern-day reports, uh, but it's really hard to say. Perhaps the creature has you know, remained hidden or maybe it passed away. Uh, possibly it moved locations as there are rumors of similar sightings in nearby other lakes, such as a nearby small lake called Sag Pond, which also goes by other names, including Una Lake or Lake La Rouche Lamar or the Bottomless Lake. So this particular body of water, again, is located in Palmdale along the Sierra Highway. So that's the story of Lizzie of Lake Elizabeth. Another lake which reportedly had a lake monster is Lake Lagunas. And I call this uh, segment Old Bob of Lake Lagunas. So California has a number of lakes involving unknown creatures. Scattered reports of unknown creatures have been come from the Blue Lakes east of Ukiah and from Clear Lake in uh, Northern California. But it's uh, Lake Laguna, which has had a number of reports. This is located in Fullerton in Southern California. It's a seven acre lake and there's been a number of reports, largely unsubstantiated, of a large, unknown, prehistoric-looking creature lurking in its depths. Uh, these reports stretch back at least 40 years, and people, the locals, call it Old Bob, and eyewitnesses say that it has a huge head which would peek above the surface of the lake for just seconds before diving down beneath the surface. And these were pretty much rumors for a very long time until September 9th, 2004, when the rumors were proven to be true. 
turned out that workers were hired to pull fish from the lake and they captured something very unusual in their fishing nets. The lake at the time was undergoing a $2 million renovation, which involved dredging the entire lake. And when the workers pulled up their nets, the last thing they expected to find was old Bob. But there he was, tangled in the nets, the lake monster of Lake Laguna. And it turned out to be nothing other than a giant alligator snapping turtle. So alligator snapping turtles are the largest of all freshwater turtles in North America. And they can get huge. They can grow up to about 250 pounds and live longer than 100 years. But they are only native to south and the south and the east coast. And they're actually illegal in California. Uh, old Bob weighed about 100 pounds and uh, scientists estimated his age at about 50 years old. He had the characteristic huge head and worm-like tongue, a hooked beak, and a three-foot diameter ridge-like shell. So how he got into the lake remains a mystery. Officials speculated that perhaps he was a pet that grew too big for his pond and the owner just dumped him into the lake. So Sharon Paquette, she was the vice president of the Orange County chapter of the California Turtle and Tortoise Club. And according to her, alligator snapping turtles have changed very little since the age of dinosaurs. And as she says, and I quote, no wonder folks get excited. It's an awesome sight to see what looks like a prehistoric creature. Old Bob is dangerous. These are powerful animals. A human could lose a foot or fingers. So because old Bob uh, was living in Lake Laguna illegally, he was carted away and taken to a refuge on the East Coast, uh, where he, as far as I know, still remains today. But there is a lesson to be learned from old Bob. I think that the fact that a creature of his size remained undetected in the lake for so long lends cre credence to the other reports of lake monsters that have remained undetected in the larger California lakes. For example, Lake Elsinore. And that brings us to our next segment, Elsie of Lake Elsinore. So, of course, Loch Ness has the world's most famous uh, lake monster, Nessie. And there are, there are hundreds of lakes that actually have lake monsters. Uh, but Lake Elsinore is just one of many, and it's got a very famous lake monster by the name of Elsie. Uh, the town of Lake Elsinore was actually built around the lake and uh, is the area's main industry, mostly tourism and recreation. Thousands of people flock each year to Lake Elsinore to enjoy its fresh waters. So it's entirely possible that a large unknown creature has remained undetected. And the fact is, reports stretch back well over 100 years. The first reports of a monster in Lake Elizabeth come from the Pai Ache Native Americans, who told visiting Spaniards that their lake, Lake Elsinore, uh, contained a gigantic monster. Uh, they called it a Tengvo Wumoma, and uh, that was the name of the lake. And uh, they believed that this very large creature lived inside of it and that it could belch steam and even fire, much like a dragon. So some people speculated that perhaps this was hot springs, which would belch out, you know, hot gases. Uh, but I don't think that that really explains what people are seeing because the first reports of this lake monster stretched all the way back to 1884 in terms of eyewitnesses. Uh, there was a rancher by the name of Mr. C.B. Greenstreet. He and his family were on the lake when they saw a creature which they described as about 100 feet long with a 30 foot long tail. And uh, it scared the daylights out of them. Uh, as soon as it saw them, it quickly swam off with, at such high speed that it created a 10 foot wave, a wake. Uh, 
this family, the Green Streets, were so upset by the setting, they refused to ever go back to Lake Elsinore again. So for many years, there weren't any well-verified sightings. But throughout the 60s and 70s, there was a whole rash of pretty well-verified sightings. In 1967, a family was boating on the lake, and they saw a strange creature. It had several humps which rose above the surface of the lake. Uh, three years later, in 1970, a witness by the name of Bonnie Play said that she saw the creature twice and that it was at least 12 feet long and had a dinosaur-like appearance. In 1971, a man by the name of Bill Ware from Henderson, Nevada, was visiting the lake uh, with his wife. They were water skiing. Uh, she was water skiing, and he saw a strange creature following her. Uh, it scared them both pretty badly, actually. And uh, throughout the 1970s, there were a number of sightings. At least three of these sightings come directly from park officials who said that they saw the, a weird creature they could not identify. They also said it was about 12 feet long, what they saw, and they could see three or four humps sticking out of the water. And these humps had weird spikes along the top of it. So again, you get this sort of weird dinosaur-like description. Uh, another witness is Sam Daniels, and he had a pretty clear sighting, and I'd just like to quote his sighting directly. As he says, As I stood at the water's edge, I could see a very large swirl on top of the water. Suddenly it came my way. Thinking that it was one of the big fish, I was startled to see what looked like a very large lizard coming at me. I was scared, but also amazed at what I saw. It swam back and forth in front of me, no more than 20 feet from me. And there were no humps on the, on the back humps to the back feet from me. It had huge, round, black eyes. Its skin was very dark green with black spots on it. I couldn't see any teeth. It made no sound at all. But suddenly it dove. When it came up, it had a very large carp in its mouth. And that's how I noticed the teeth, more like what a lizard would have. When it swallowed the carp, it dove again and it never came back. I never told anyone about it because they wouldn't have believed me anyway. But I did tell a few people years later. Uh, researcher Brent Swanser uh, looked into this and he actually interviewed a couple of first-hand eyewitnesses. Uh, in 1993, according to Brent, he talked to a kayaker who says his kayak was actually nudged by a strange creature, which he said reminded him of a whale, so very large. And in 1994, a fisherman, according to, again to Brent Swanser, uh, hooked a fish and was pulling it out of the lake when suddenly he saw it, and it was not a fish. It had a head like a very large alligator and uh, as soon as it came up out of the water the line snapped and this creature uh, dived back beneath the surface so yeah there are a number of witnesses as one local writer david allen russell reports and i quote there are still many reliable witnesses who claim they have seen the monster following their boats under the water late at night terrifying them so much that they headed pell-mell for the banks and beaches as fast as their water vessels could carry them and never came back. So most people um, describe this as a sort of a serpent-like creature and only a few have seen its actual head or face, uh, which is described um, as very much like a snake, according to most reports, uh, with a dog-like snout. So what's weird about this particular ac account, uh, Lake Elsinore has actually dried up completely twice in its history. It dried up completely in 1954 during a bad drought. So skeptics have concluded that uh, any sightings would therefore be impossible. Of course, that's hard to say because uh, maybe it uh, did die, but it laid eggs and reproduced or moved to another area. At any rate, in the late 1980s, 
a local company, Poppy Graphics, uh, created a life-size statue of Elsie and made the creature the city's official mascot. More than 200 people donated their time, money, or supplies to build this fiberglass statue, which stands about 25 feet high and 100 feet long and uh, is being held captive on Lakeland Beach where you, anyone can go and view it. So, in fact, uh, there is, I mean, Lake Elsinore is open to the public. It's a very popular tourist attraction. And there is the Elsie Museum located on Graham Avenue in Lake Elsinore if you'd like to learn more about Elsie the Lake Monster. Uh, perhaps the most controversial of California's lake monsters is the lake monster of Lake Hodges. This is called Haji, the lake monster of Lake Hodges. And uh, yeah, it's certainly controversial because most of the information about this case comes from a single website. Uh, but of course, the locals know all about uh, the Haji, the lake monster, and it's quite the topic of conversation. Uh, lake Hodges is a rather large lake. Uh, it's about 1,200 acres. It's got 27 miles of shoreline. It's a long, thin, winding lake. Uh, it's about 115 feet deep, and its waters are filled by the Del Dios River, which has run through this valley for 40,000 years. So that's certainly long enough for a lake monster to have arrived there. Uh, lake Hodges used to be a much smaller lake, uh, but was actually uh, enlarged through a project uh, involving a dam. It was regarded for many, many years uh, by the local Kumeye Native Americans as sacred. In fact, on the south side of the lake, they created a sacred site to honor the area. It's called Piedras Pintadas, or Painted Rocks, and is still considered sacred to the Native Americans. But in 1916, Colonel Ed Fletcher convinced the Santa Fe Railroad to create a dam at the western edge of the lake. The Native Americans protested, and for the first time they said that there was a lake monster, an unknown creature which actually guarded the lake. Uh, the Union Railroad went ahead and built this dam anyway. And uh, after two years, the dam was completed and the lake was tripled in size. So the first modern reports of Haji date back to about 1921 when fishermen from San Diego and local fishermen reported seeing a large disturbance in the water. And these reports continued for about two years. In 1923, events began to escalate. Two mines near the lake uh, had been in operation for years, but four days apart, both of the mines were vandalized. Heavy rock extraction equipment had been toppled over and partially crushed, and the two mine owners blamed each other. Police were brought in to investigate, but uh, no conclusions could really be drawn because uh, there were no footprints, and people then began to speculate that perhaps Haji was responsible. In 1925, the city of San Diego purchased the lake for $490,000, and the area was turned into a recreational and fishing area, and this is when reports of Haji really began to increase. And by 1921, the reports had become so numerous that reportedly the mayor of Escondido uh, was receiving pressure from local citizens to take action, and he requested the San Diego mayor, Mayor Harry C. Clark, to fund an official investigation. And he agreed, and reportedly uh, the Scripps Institute of Oceanography uh, did a, an official investigation in 1930. And uh, according to this website, the Lake Haji website, found conclusive evidence of uh, Lake uh, of Haji in Lake Hodges. Uh, one researcher assistant reported his own sighting. He said he was out on the lake when he saw a large lizard-like head protruding from the water. 
1931, a small boat was docked along the pier. It was mysteriously destroyed. Police were called in to investigate. And again, there was no evidence of any culprit found. Uh, but there was evidence of a, quote, great turmoil under the water along the base of the pier from a boat, perhaps, or an underwater vessel, or perhaps a large creature. So at this point, Thomas W. Vaughan, who uh, was the director of the Scripps Institute, headed a project which involved the construction of a large metal cage. Uh, it was the size of a small house uh, to try and capture this creature. And, and in 1932, this cage was submerged into the lake and a small sea lion was secured inside as bait, along with several glass cameras inside of glass containers. So the trap was complete and uh, a short time later the cage was raised up and investigators were amazed to see that the bait had been taken but the trap remained unsprung. They checked the cameras and uh, at least one of these cameras captured an uh, intriguing photograph which appears to show the shape of a large underwater creature. This photo was digitally enhanced and appears to show sort of a dinosaur-looking shape with a long snake-like uh, neck and a head, a large thick body, and wide flat fins. Uh, so further attempts were made to capture this creature, but this ended up in smashed cameras, and uh, Haji apparently uh, destroyed them. Uh, so the project itself uh, ran into problems when people began to protest that sea lions were being used as bait. And in 1933, the project was canceled. Uh, but reportedly, uh, they continued to study the possibility of a creature in this lake. In 1941, scientists from the Scripps Institute uh, reportedly received funds from the United States Navy's Office of Naval Research. Uh, they placed a portion of the lake off limits to, to people and placed a huge length of tripwire at a depth of 12 feet attached to a large rack of cameras. And uh, on the there was no activity, but on the third month, the tripwire was activated and the most famous uh, photo of Haji was taken, which shows a very large hump protruding from the water. So around this time, World War II uh, started to come along and all research was stopped, but sightings continued. In 1956, the lake became overcome by carp, and officials decided that the only solution was to kill all the fish entirely in the lake. And they poisoned the entire lake with rhodanon, a very highly toxic chemical. And uh, this caused them almost all the fish to asphyxiate. And they then restocked the lake. Uh, some people thought, hey, they were just tr actually trying to kill uh, Haji. But... Uh, it's unknown for sure, of course. The lake was then reopened to the public and everyone assumed that Haji had been killed, but reports began to surface again. In 1966, two fami families were picnicking along the shore uh, and when about 50 yards offshore, a large creature surfaced. Seven people saw it. Uh, one person snapped a photo, which appears to show a dark hump protruding from the water. Uh, 1985, the dam keeper Morgan A. Tidwell held a press conference in which he announced that Haji was in fact a real creature of an unknown species which inhabited the lake. And sightings of Haji have continued to the present day and are reportedly being studied by the Lake Hodges Scientific Research Center, at least according to this website. And in 1999, cameras were set up along the shore trying to catch a photo of Haji. And uh, as far as I know, it hasn't been successful. There's very few good explanations to account for this weird creature because um, the fish, I mean, the lake does contain, contain a lot of fish, but they're all pretty small. 
Uh, there's largemouth bass, crappie, bluegill, catfish, bullhead, and carp, uh, but none big enough to really account for Haji uh, itself. But uh, Haji's, Lake Hodges is a big lake, and uh, some fish that have been caught from this lake are very large of size. In fact, in uh, 1985, the second largest bass ever recorded up to that time, uh, caught in the United States, was pulled out of Lake Hodges by a fisherman by the name of Jean Dupras. And this bass weighed about 20, uh, 25 pounds. So although it's large, it's nowhere big enough to account for Haji. So yeah, Lake Hodges is a very popular tourist attraction to this day. It's got picnicking, boating, windsurfing, horseback riding, mountain biking, all kinds of uh, activities. And uh, also has a little museum. This lake is located about 31 miles north of San Diego. And uh, again, is probably one of the most controversial uh, accounts of a lake monster because while the locals do talk all about it and there's a statue of it, uh, the conclusive evidence that it's still there remains elusive. Uh, that brings us along to our next account, which is the lake monster of Lake Tahoe, who's also known as Tessie. So Tessie of Lake Tahoe is actually a very well-verified lake monster. Lake Tahoe is a beautiful alpine lake. It's a freshwater lake located in central California, right along the Nevada-California border. It's an enormous tourist attraction, bringing in thousands of water sport enthusiasts each year, skiers, snowboarders in the summer, of course, or I mean in the winter, but uh, yeah, it has its own lake monster. And unknown to many people, Lake Tahoe is actually very deep. It's the second deepest lake in the United States and has a depth of at least 1,600 feet. And uh, reports of a lake monster stretch back a very long time, well over 100 years ago. Uh, reports began around the time that American settlers first started arriving at the lake and have continued to the present day. And like other California lake monsters, the first witnesses were actually Native Americans, including the Washoe and the Paiute tribes. In the mid-1800s, the two tribes often fought over the right to hunt and fish in the lake, and both of these tribes had legends of a lake monster that lived in the waters. They held sacred, me sacred meetings at a large cavern called Cave Rock, uh, which is located above another large underwater cavern and is supposedly the lair of Tessie of Lake Tahoe. So the first actual sighting from modern times occurred in 1897 when a man by the name of I.C. Coggin said he saw a giant creature with a huge head and giant eyes. But it wasn't until 1930 when a series of sightings uh, revived these legends, I'll call them, and people began to take reports of Tessie much more seriously. And over the years, reportings became so numerous th that a museum was actually created to document the history of Tessie. And this museum is full of Tessie souvenirs and newspaper clippings of various sightings. Unfortunately, the museum was recently uh, shut down. But Tessie is braver than most lake monsters and has made regular appearances throughout the years. In the summer of 1979, a visiting couple was absolutely convinced that they had observed a sea serpent uh, off of Tahoe Vista, and they reported their account to newspapers. In 1984, there was a series of highly publicized sightings by various witnesses from different locations on the lake. And in 1985, a tourist to the lake saw the creature and shot several frames of footage showing a large 
something, a creature, swimming through the lake. Officials tried to downplay the sightings and uh, even uh, reportedly attempted to suppress the film. Perhaps one of the best verified sightings comes from a gentleman by the name of Jean St. Denis and his friend who were walking along the beach near Cave Rock. And as St. Denis says, we saw a blotchy gray creature about 10 to 15 feet long. It turned a corner and produced a V-shaped wake in front of it. At this point, the creature surfaced briefly and then plunged back into the lake. And this was not uh, Gene's only sighting. Uh, it was uh, some years later. He actually makes a living at the lake. Uh, he's the owner of the Blue Ribbon Fishing and Tahoe Trophy Trout. And so he spends a lot of time on the lake. And this puts him in the perfect position to have another sighting. And his next encounter would be much more dramatic. He was swimming along the shoreline with another friend when suddenly the water exploded underneath them. And when it finally calmed down, they saw what they described as a 16-foot-long snake-like creature slithering away. And looking down below them in, in the water, they waited, as, as he says, and I quote, We waited for the silt to settle and found large fin prints where the creature had been. So he's found other bits of evidence throughout the years. Uh, twice when he was reeling fish into his boat, something attacked the fish, leaving what looked like enormous teeth marks. Uh, as he says, and I quote, about halfway to the boat, these fish, and they were big fish, got raked. The holes left by the teeth were big enough to put a pencil into. So there are skeptics and debunkers. Skeptics claim that Tessie could be just an unusual or rare fish. And one popular explanation is that they, Tessie is actually a sturgeon, which can get huge and weigh up to 1,500 pounds and can get up to 20 feet long and live for, get this, more than 100 years. Another possible candidate is a muskie. This is a large, aggressive fish which can reach a length of eight feet. However, both of these explanations are not without their problems. For one thing, sturgeons do not have teeth, and neither muskie or sturgeons have ever been caught in Lake Tahoe. Uh, and the reports, you know, the descriptions of this being describe a much longer serpent-like creature. Um, some of these reports say about 60 feet long and very snake-like with dark skin and reptilian features. So it does not appear to be a sturgeon or a muskie. There have been scientific studies. In 1984, Charles Goldman, a professor at Davis University, came to study the accounts and he gave a lecture on the topic and he was not convinced. He gave a very sort of ridiculous explanation saying that what people are actually seeing is just colliding boat wakes, which produce a series of waves, and it's just an optical illusion. I don't believe that explanation for a second. There's far too many witnesses. For example, in 1988, a story in the San Francisco Examiner described a number of sightings, one by an eye doctor, uh, one involving two police officers, another involving two nuns, another involving several postal workers. So most of the people who have seen Tessie uh, believe it's exactly what she appear appears to be, an unknown, unidentified species. Uh, according to researcher Sherry Louise, Tessie sightings that occur at a rate of about a dozen per year, or once, once a month, and at one point, a Tessie phone hotline was established at Kings Beach. Uh, this is the former site of the Tessie Museum. And uh, unfortunately, again, uh, funding ran out and the hotline has been discontinued. Uh, there was some rumors that Jacques Cousteau uh, actually conducted a search for Tessie and successfully located her, uh, but decided that not to reveal the discovery because the world wasn't ready, or perhaps he feared that Tessie would be hunted to her death. So although this is a rumor, it's an intriguing one to say the least. 
And TESI has become one of the world's best verified, or certainly one of the U.S.'s best verified lake monsters. And in fact, cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman cites Lake Tahoe as one of the top 10 best locations in the world to look for a lake monster. So those are the reports of lake monsters in California. But I have to tell you, even more impressive are the accounts of a sea serpent off the California coast, particularly off the coast of Monterey. So California has a thousand mile long, beautiful coastline with some of the most crowded and popular beaches in the world. And if sea serpents were real, you'd expect there to be a number of reports up and down the coast. And this is exactly what is uh, be being reported. These reports of a sea serpent stretch back about 125 years and are actually still occur occurring today. The first person to really examine sea serpent reports in any detail is a cryptozoologist by the name of Bernard Huvelmans. And he studied cases from all over the world, but focused on the California coast because of the large number of reports. And as he writes, this territory of one type of sea serpent, the maned, it would seem, probably stretches all along the west coast of North America, at least in the temperate zone. Uh, so sea serpents reports have been recorded all throughout the 1910s and 1920s when there was a flurry of sightings as far north as San Francisco and all the way south to San Clemente. Uh, but the earliest report, er, even earlier reports, have been located by researchers. Uh, one of the earliest, according to Bernard Huvelmans, occurred on December 21st, 1879, uh, when Captain Versch Verscher of the ship Granada was sailing along the Southern California coast off Cape San Lucas when he and his crew observed a thin-necked serpent-like creature rise three feet out of the water in full view of everyone on board. Uh, Huvelman speculates that perhaps this was either a giant eel or a baby sea serpent. Uh, the ship's second officer uh, said that that was not the only sea serpent in this sighting. He saw another uh, large, larger sea serpent eight years earlier off the coast of Australia. Uh, so, yeah, these are seen all over the world, and people who are on the water report sometimes multiple sightings. Another sighting occurred on April 5th, 1885, when steam passengers off the San Francisco coast described what they saw as a huge black monster. It rose about 10 feet above the water, it had a huge mouth, at least four feet wide, filled with sharp teeth, and a very long tail, about 60 feet long. And this was just the beginning. Uh, the first reports to really gain widespread attention occurred off the coast of Southern California along the Santa Catalina Channel. And starting in 1914, actually, numerous local fishermen reported their sighting of an enormous sea serpent-like creature. For the next five years, numerous reports uh, poured in, and uh, there were so many that it was impossible to pass these off as rumors because some of these witnesses were of very high standing. For example, in 1919, the world-famous fisherman Ralph Bandini confirmed all these rumors when he came forward with his own account of having seen this giant sea serpent. He was an expert big game fisherman and authored three classic books on fishing. Uh, he was the secretary of the Tuna Club, a member of the California Fish and Game Commission, a lawyer, a coastal conservationist, and uh, a really good witness. And his first sighting of what came to be known as the San Clemente monster occurred in 1919 off the coast of Catalina Island when he and his crew saw a creature off in the distance rising higher and higher out of the ocean. Uh, before they could get a closer observation, it plunged beneath the surface. But that was just the first sighting. 
wasn't long before they had another. One year later, in September 1920, uh, Bandini and his fishing partner, Smith Warren, had an unforgettable close-up sighting. It was 8 o'clock in the morning, and they were fishing off the coast of San Clemente Island when this sea serpent made a really dramatic appearance. As Bandini writes in his own words, as Ralph Bandini writes, and I quote, All of a sudden, I saw something dark and big heave up. I seized my glasses. What I saw brought me straight up, a great columnar neck and head. I guess that is what it was, lifting a good ten feet. It must have been five or six feet thick something that appeared to be a kind of mane or coarse hair, almost like a fine seaweed, hung dankly. But the eyes, those were what held me, huge, seemingly bulging round, at least a foot in diameter. We swung around it, and then even as I watched through the glasses, the thing sank. There was no swirl, no fuss, just a leisurely, majestic sinking, and it disappeared about a quarter mile away. So Ralph Bandini estimates that this was larger than a blue whale, which is the largest known living animal on earth. And why he concluded this was because when he was viewing this sea serpent, uh, it didn't rise and fall with the waves as a whale would have done, and instead remained as motionless as a rock. And he knew that this meant that like an iceberg, most of the creature was underwater and must be incredibly huge. Uh, he later sighted this creature on two other separate occasions, both in the Santa Catalina Channel. And it was during the same time period that a number of other very prominent witnesses also saw this same, apparently the same, sea serpent. George Farnsworth, who was the president of the Tuna Club, uh, claimed to have observed this creature and gave an identical appearance. As George Farnsworth says, and I'm quoting, its eyes were 12 inches in diameter and set on the side like an ordinary fish, but more central. It had a big mane of hair, about two feet long. We were within a hundred feet of it before it went down. This was no sea elephant. It was some kind of mammal, for it could not have been standing so long unless it was. Other witnesses include the former Tuna Club president, Jimmy Jump, a millionaire by the name of George C. Thomas III, uh, the inventor of the Cox Reel, Joe Cox, and a well-known author of fishing books, J. Charles Davis II. And in each case, uh, these Witnesses said that they saw this serpent in the same area, the Santa Catalina Channel. Uh, in 1922, a fisherman by the name of Sal Collette was fishing off Moss Landing. This is in the Monterey Bay, Bay area uh, in Northern California. When he saw something floating on the surface, he thought it was trash or something. So he approached it in his boat and saw that it wasn't trash. It was, in fact, a very large sea creature with a huge barrel-like head. And uh, it, uh, this uh, shocked him, and this thing quickly dived beneath the surface as he approached. Uh, he had another sighting uh, some 16 years later in 1938. And uh, he said it was larger, longer, than his 45-foot boat. It had a wrinkled brown skin and an almost human-looking face. Uh, as he approached it, it appeared to be sleeping on the surface, uh, but woke up, stared at him with these large, round eyes, and then dived beneath the water. Uh, he became obsessed with sea serpents after that and spent a lot of time trying to prove his sighting, unsuccessfully, unfortunately. But many more witnesses would soon see sea serpents off the California coast. In 1925, Mr. E. J. Lear was driving near Monterey Bay when he saw a commotion in the water and uh, he kept watching. He was driving along and he saw a group of sea lions were actually attacking what appeared to be a 30-foot-long snake-like creature. 
Unfortunately, he just kept driving and only viewed this for a few minutes, uh, but it was there the entire time. Uh, so there are definitely some sort of strange creatures off the coast. Uh, hard evidence of this was found in 1925 when the carcass of an enormous creature uh, washed up on the beach of Santa Cruz. It was badly decomposed. It measured about 36 feet in length, appeared to have a long, slender neck, small eyes, a large head, and a snout, a sort of a beaked snout. And sea serpent enthusiasts were sure that this appeared to be proof at last. Uh, but the skull was examined by scientists from the Museum of the Academy of Sciences, the California Academy of Sciences, and they determined it to be a rare species of beaked whale, which is one which has only been seen a few times, actually, in recorded history. And they said the long neck was just an illusion caused by the decomposition of the skin separating from the rib cage. So not everyone degree, agrees with this interpretation. There was another scientist uh, whose identity has not been verified by researchers, but his name allegedly was E.L. Wallace. And according to him, he examined this carcass and said it, uh, it wasn't a beak, but a bill. And it couldn't be a whale because, as he says, the backbone of a whale is far larger than any bone in this animal. And its tail is too weak for an animal of the deep. And that does away with the version of a whale. With a bill like it possesses, it must have lived on herbage. I would call it a type of pleosaur. So, I don't know, that's a controversial uh, report. And although the Santa Cruz creature turned out to be a known species, uh, it proved that this area does contain a large variety of rare marine animals. And in fact, in 1901, uh, a fish known as an oarfish washed up on Newport Beach. Uh, and on September 25th, another oarfish was captured off the coast of Malibu. Happened again on the island of Coronado, just north of the Mexican border. And an oarfish certainly looks like a sea serpent. It can reach a length of up to 23 feet. So maybe that's what these people are seeing. I don't think so. Not if you look at the accounts of the Ralph Bandini and George Farnsworth and the other uh, witnesses who said that this creature was much, much larger. So what's very interesting about uh, the Monterey Bay sightings is Monterey Bay is a very, very deep submarine canyon. It's one of the deepest areas along the coastal, uh, the West Coast. And uh, it's been declared a federal marine sanctuary. It covers about 5,300 square miles, 200 miles along the coast. And it's the largest marine refuge in the United States. Uh, some sections of this trench are almost two miles deep, about 9,000 feet. The exact depth is not actually known, uh, but is reportedly deeper than the Grand Canyon. And it's the deepest underwater trench in North America. And this area is protected because there's such a huge variety of marine life. Uh, this bay contains at least 340 species of fish, 30 species of marine mammals, and 116 species of birds. So it shouldn't be too hard to believe that there might be giant sea serpents here as well. And the reports were so frequent that it, this sea serpent at Monterey Bay was coined Bobo, uh, or the old man of Monterey Bay. So sightings were reported throughout the 1930s and 40s, and researcher Randall Reinstadt, uh, who is an expert on Monterey Bay sea monsters, writes, quote, stories of encounters with frightening monsters and snake-like serpents have circulated throughout the Monterey Bay for countless years. And yeah, we know the sightings reach back about 100 years. Uh, they began around 1920 when many fishermen started reporting these sightings. Uh, and at first they were not believed, but as more and more fishermen began reporting it, uh, people started to take these sightings seriously. 
There was one very well verified sighting which occurred in September of 1930 when a fishing boat was off Point Joe. This is just south of Monterey Bay. And the crew came upon a very large creature eyeing them from a distance of about 80 feet away. And they were trying to determine what it was when it rose up out of the water to about six feet high. And they described, like many of the other witnesses, a human-looking head perched on a four-foot-thick neck. And just after looking at them for just a few moments, this enormous creature dived beneath the surface and swam directly underneath the boat. And uh, the people, the crew, looked down and could see that this was a weird creature that they could not identify. It had very large fins and a huge tail and it quickly disappeared underwater. So another witness, a, uh, a Monterey resident, had a sighting in 1930, the early 1930s. He was walking along the shore when he saw a creature come out of the water about 200 yards offshore. And he says it stuck its head out of water to a height of about 12 feet. And he described the head as looking very much like a giraffe. And he saw it for a few moments before this creature dived back in and disappeared. So at first, these reports were largely ignored. Uh, but in 1938, there was a very well-verified sighting when the crew of the ship, Dante Alieri, or Algieri, were crossing over the deep part of the Monterey Trench when they saw a strange object floating in the water and as they approached, they realized this was a creature about 30 feet long, at least, with a fish-like tail, and again, a surprisingly human-like face. Uh, like other accounts, this uh, boat apparently had surprised this creature, which was dozing, <laughs> sleeping on the surface. And as the boat drew alongside the creature, it woke up, looked at the ship, and quickly dived back into the water. Uh, but many of the people on the ship got a very good look at this thing. And uh, one witness said it had a face like a very old man's or a monkey face with eyes twice the diameter of breakfast buns and a mouth like a crescent moon. Barnacles were all over the head and also along the black body. Folds of white skin hung beneath the neck. The body was as big around as a pickup truck. It must have weighed maybe eight or nine tons. So this was reported to local newspapers, and this is when the sea serpent of Monterey became established as a real creature. Another very credible sighting occurred in 1940 to the captain and crew of a sardine boat. They were sailing across the bay when they saw, again, a large object floating directly above the Monterey Trench, they approached it and saw that this was a creature about 90 feet long. And uh, it was sticking up about four feet out of the water. They circled around the creature, which uh, turned in the water to sort of keep an eye on this boat. And like the other witnesses who have seen the sea serpent, uh, this creature had a human-like head, uh, a gray-brown body, about three feet wide, and it was in view for a good 10 minutes. And the captain was considering trying to actually capture this creature when it suddenly plunged beneath the water and disappeared. So this sighting marked the beginning of a huge wave of sightings. Uh, and according to researcher uh, Mr. Reinstedt, and I'll quote, in the late 1940s, there was a rash of such sightings in the Pacific Grove, Monterey, and Fort Ord areas. Almost to a person, witnesses who made sightings from shore described the creature as extremely long, approximately four feet in diameter, and multi-humped. Reports of the coloring indicated the body was either tan or gray. The serpent-like head was said to have been flat in appearance, with eyes like those of an African crocodile. And according to Reinstedt, the description of the monster or monsters vary, but the reports of the human-like face were, quote, remarkably consistent. And while some of these reports were, for, were from quite some time ago, they continue throughout the years. On November 7th, 1946, 
uh, the script, a report came of a sea monster off Cape San Martin. And one of the witnesses described this creature as having a face like a gorilla. Another encounter occurred one morning around dawn in July of 1948 when a crew of nine men were sailing at the midpoint of Monterey Bay directly over the trench when they saw Bobo and he was bobbing in the water about 175 feet away. Uh, he rose up out of the water about six feet high and again the face looked human-like with a quote, flat nose and large blinking eyes. Uh, the sailors in this monster stared at each other for a few moments until one of the crew grabbed a rifle and actually opened fire on the creature, at which point it quickly disappeared beneath the surface. So these reports were coming in regularly to local newspapers, and uh, the local population uh, became absolutely convinced that this, these sightings were real. According to one resident who wrote in the Saturday Evening Post, sea monsters have been sighted frequently in Monterey Bay, California for the past 20 years. So common has the occurrence become that fishermen no longer mention it with tongue in cheek, and many are the tales of encounters with the old man of Monterey Bay, as it is called locally, and length of the creature is estimated to be from 45 to 70 feet. So this is where most of these sea serpent sightings are occurring, but again, they go all the way south to San Clemente. In his book, Mysterious Sea Monsters of California's Central Coast, Reinstedt presents more than a dozen additional sightings ranging up and down the coast, most of which occurred in the 1930s and 40s, but the 1950s brought more reports of this maned sea serpent off of San Clemente. In December of 1950, a postal worker by the name of Miss Opal Lambert was working in her office in the Summerland Resort. This overlooks the coastal area of the Santa Catalina Channel. And as she says, and I quote, I was stamping Christmas cards when I looked up and saw it swimming in circles about 200 yards offshore. She called the police, but by the time the police arrived, the creature had left. She had kept it in view for about 10 minutes, and she estimates that its head and neck rose about four feet above the surface of the water. It was three years later, June 8, 1953, this creature made another appearance. Professional s fisherman Sam Randazzo and his crew of eight men observed the serpent when it surfaced right next to their boat, as Randazzo says, we saw the thing, estimated that it had a neck 10 feet long and between 5 and 6 feet thick. Its eyes were cone-shaped, protruding, and about a foot in diameter. Uh, they immediately called, called the Coast Guard and reported their sighting. And sightings continued. October 1954, Barney Armstrong of his boat, the Sea Fern, was off the coast of Newport Beach, when he saw a creature that he estimated weighed at least 20 tons. As he says, and I quote, I spotted the thing sticking up out of the water about four feet high. Uh, he said it had a large round head and a mouth that was about two feet across. And it was around the same time that an aircraft worker by the name of Phil Parker and his friend, an architect, Grant King, they were fishing off the coast of La Jolla, which is not far away, when they saw an enormous sea creature surface about 50 feet away from their boat. They watched it for 25 minutes and said that it had a face and shoulders like a gorilla. As Phil Parker says, it wasn't a whale and it wasn't a sea lion and it sure didn't look like a snake. So sightings continued throughout the 1970s and 80s. There was more reports of a serpent-like creature in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, in October and November of 1983, witnesses saw what they described as a dark, eel-like creature swimming up and down the coast. And some of the witnesses were actually able to observe this through binoculars. 
A very well verified sighting occurred on October 31st, 1983, when a construction crew working at, on the Golden Gate Bridge above Stinson Beach uh, looked down in the water and saw a hundred foot long creature swimming along the shoreline. Uh, another trucker who was in the area also observed this. One of the construction workers, Mark Ratto, reports that this creature was about five feet thick and could move through the water very quickly. And he said it was actually being followed by a large flock of birds and a school of about two dozen sea lions who were perhaps trying to uh, capture some of the fish being brought up by the wake of this sea serpent. According to Mark Ratto, this creature lifted its head and neck up out of the water, and he could also see several humps also coming out of the water behind it. They reported their sighting to the local newspapers, and after they reported it, numerous other witnesses uh, in the area also reported seeing this creature. Another recent sighting occurred on February 5, 1985, off Stone Tower Point in the San Francisco Bay. Two brothers, Robert and William Clark, saw two seals swimming frantically across the bay, and looking behind the seals, they saw what they described as a gigantic, quote, snake-like creature. And it was propelling itself by forming its body into humps and moving them up and down. And they also noticed small fins along its side. Uh, the creature quickly moved away. Uh, the brothers were absolutely astonished and posted themselves as lookouts, hoping to see it again. And their patience was rewarded a few weeks later when the sea serpent returned and they got another sighting. And uh, since then, they said that they've observed this creature several times and uh, have also found many other witnesses who have also seen it. So yeah, it appears that sea serpents are real and have been regularly seen up and down the California coast for nearly a century. Uh, we're still waiting for the conclusive footage for someone to capture this on film. Uh, and that hasn't come yet, but I'm hoping it does because the reports of a giant sea serpent sticking its head five or ten feet out of the water with a human-like face and a mane and eyes as big as dinner plates and a mouth two feet long filled with sharp teeth, well, that would be something to see for sure. And I, for one, am looking forward to it. <laughs> So yeah, that's my show for today. There are unknown lake monsters in several lakes in California and definitely dozens upon dozens of reports of a sea serpent up and down the California coast that have yet to be explained as any known creature. So once again, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And until next time, keep having fun.